Hello Oracle Database world, this is Justin, and in this Oracle Database YouTube video tutorial, I'm going to show you a major difference between the two types of deletions you can do against rows in a table, okay, against table data. So, let's set our Oracle SID to Finance. Let's ensure we're set, our Oracle SID is set properly, which it is, Finance. And let's connect to the Finance Database via the SQL Plus program. To show user to ensure we're connected with SysDBA user, sys, which we are, and we'll ensure we're connected to the right database, select name from the dollar sign database, finance. Now, we have a table in the sys schema called names, and that table has no rows in it, it's empty, it's not populated. Okay, and this names table has one column F name with data type var card to 20. Now, we're going to go ahead now, and we're going to insert data into this table. So we're going to insert a, a row of data into this table. We're going to do insert into names values Justin. Okay, so now the table names has one row in the F name column called um, Justin. Now, I didn't commit it, notice, okay? Well, actually, I do want to do that. So I want to commit. Now, when I commit this this row, I cannot do a rollback like this, and the value and the insert will go away. It won't go away because I committed it. In contrast to that, if I were to insert another Justin row into my table, and I didn't commit, you don't see a commit, and I typed in rollba rollback. Okay, it's back to two because I didn't commit it and I was able to roll it back. All right. So, and to get a full treatment on tra Oracle transaction concepts such as this, or on you know concepts regarding Oracle transactions, check out my Oracle transactions and SQL videos. Okay, so we inserted a row, we committed it, we can't roll it back. We inserted a row, we did not commit it, and we were able to roll it back. All right. So there's the same type of concept when it comes to deleting rows in the table. Okay, so let's say I just insert all these Justins into my table and I commit them all. Select the asterisk from names. And I type in rollback. But it doesn't matter. There's still eight Justins here because I committed it up there. Okay, so let's say I wanted to delete all the row, all of this data from the table. Well, I have two options. I could either, I could either truncate the table or I could delete the rows. Okay, so if I do a delete asterisk from names, oops, sorry. If I do a delete from names where F name is equal to Justin, I typed it right. Eight rows have been deleted. Select asterisk from names. Okay. Oh, no. I deleted all my rows. Well, no, you didn't. You can type in a roll a rollback like so if you don't commit. Select asterisk from names. And look, your eight rows are back. So we deleted them with the delete command. We did a select asterisk from names. No rows were selected. We rolled we roll back, and bam, they're back. Now, if I were to do a delete again like 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 so... Delete it rows, select the asterisk from names, and I want to do a commit. Then I were to do a rollback and a select, they stay deleted because I committed that change. Okay, so the point here is that a delete statement is also known as a DML statement. Okay, so as I talk about in my many transaction and SQL videos, there are several categories of uh, SQL statements can be broken down into different categories. You have DML st statements, SQL statements, data manipulation language, such as inserts and deletes, which I just proved to you. And you have DDLs, data definition languages, such as um, uh, create table. You have DCL, such as, um, which stands for data control language, which is uh, basically like uh, grants and revokes. Okay. So now, so... We just proved that a delete statement, since it's a, it's a DML, a data manipulation language SQL statement, it 
works the same way as an insert. If you commit it, if you delete, which is a DML statement, and you don't commit it, you'll be able to roll back what that what that DML statement, in this case, delete, did. Okay, just like it does with insert. Okay, it will bring it back. If you if you commit it, if you delete it and then commit it, you won't be able to roll it back and get the data back because it's the same way like with insert. Okay, it doesn't work. Okay, it works the same way as it does with insert because both insert and delete are DML, data manipulation language statements. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the video, there are two ways to remove data from a, um, well, two major ways anyway, to remove data from a table, which is removing rows from, from, from the table. Um, one of them is using the delete state SQL statement, which is DML, or you could also use the truncate command, which is a DDL statement. Okay, so now let's go ahead and let's insert a bunch of data back into our row. Insert, 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 insert. insert. Now we do select asterisk from names. We're going to commit it, and we see we have 10 rows here. Okay, since we committed it, as you know can't roll it back. The 10 rows of state will stay there. Now, let's go ahead and not use the delete command. Let's use the truncate command. Truncate, and truncate's a nice easy way to delete the whole table. Truncate table names. Table truncated. And you'll notice that the structure of the table is still there. Okay, so truncate table does not remove the metadata about the table, it removes the data in the table. So again, truncate does not, just like delete command, they don't remove the metadata, M-E-T-A data, in a data dictionary regarding a table, they remove the data in the table. So, now if we do select asterisk from names, I've been doing our truncate, there's no data in there. But, you'll notice that after I did the truncate, there is no commit command after truncate, okay? But when I, so when I type in rollback, the behavior I expect is the data to come back because I didn't commit that delete operation. It doesn't matter. See? See the differences now. Doesn't matter how many times you do it, it won't come back. Why? Because DDL statements, unlike DML statements, have what's called an implicit commit. They don't need an explicit commit. They have an implicit commit, which means they will automatically, it's implied, that's what implicit is, it will automatically, all right, commit the data. So every time you do a DDL statement, it automatically commits the change. So the fact that, that the truncate command is a DDL statement, and it does the same thing the delete command does, but there's two major differences that you need to be aware of. So when you need to remove uh, data from a table, and you have that option, whether you're deciding whether, you, as a DBA, whether you should use delete or truncate, just keep that in mind. I mean, there's other factors, obviously, but... Just keep that in mind, okay, because those are, that's a major difference between those two commands. One command you can recover from if you don't commit it. The other one, forget about it. It's like an auto commit, okay? So the DDL statement is no different than a create table, which are both DDLs. You can't roll back and get rid of the table you just created, or you can't roll back and get rid of the data you just truncated. Because DDL statement, because they're both considered DDL statements, and DDL statements, okay, have implicit um, commits, which means that they automatically issue a commit statement, if you will, right after they do what they're told to do. Okay? All right. Those are the major differences between the delete and the trunking commands. They basically accomplish the same things, but they go about it in different ways, and that's an important 